we're back with another video. This is in my messy backyard, so you'll have to deal with the long grass and all the junk in the background. But this is an impromptu one. This is a friend of mine has dumped this on me and said, it keeps going on overload all the time. We don't know what's wrong with it. Can you have a look at it? So I'm looking at it. Um, I'm about to test it. A couple of things I notice. One, the ground stake is missing. And two, this is flapping around loose. I can envisage this vibrating and causing a problem. I also know that a pretty common thing done with these is uh, people plug stuff in, then start them up, and I'm sorry about the wind, but they start them up with a load connected and that instantly puts it on overload. So I think we're just gonna start it up and see what happens, see if we can replicate the problem first. All right, so it's a fairly windy day, so if the audio is not great, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna check over for any obstructions in any ports. Might be causing a short circuit. Oh, there's a nice little rubber seal under there. And this is all pretty right. It's on, all right, so we have an engine switch for off and on here. That's a bit stiff. I turn our engine switch on, our eco switch off. So it makes it a little bit easier to start. Now, we have a pull cord around the side and we have a fuel tap and we have a choke. All right. Let's see how we go here. Oh, okay, this is interesting. A bit more choke. I'm not liking this one already. Leave our choke off. And I'll see if I can get it started and then we'll be back. All right, I'm gonna check a couple of things first. Namely, we have fuel. Yes, it smells fresh and flammable. Let's have a look around here. Our fuel tap is indeed on. I'm pretty sure that's a choke. There's a little motor valve there doesn't seem to be much else. I think we're just going to have to keep pulling this cord for a bit, see if it starts up. Now, we will double check indeed that we have engine switches indeed on, eco is indeed off. So, we'll keep going until it starts. So yep, straight away we have overload light. So, uh, let's turn our fuel tap off for a start. I think we need to get this front panel off and have a look. My guess is gonna be something has become disconnected or shorted from all this rattling. So we need to get this off, which means I need to find screwdrivers. Right, we have some tools and uh, not a tool. Okay. Ah, okay, so there is a plastic backing piece on this side that's obviously missing on that one. But uh, we'll make do with what we've got. I may need to find some nuts and bolts to go in there in a minute. Our panel looks to be free modular and sealed. So I think I'm gonna unplug all the plugs that I can here and disconnect, take this inside and take a close look at it. We have a connector here that has a latch on it apparently. That one. Pull you out. What's that? That's an earth wire to something. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to have to pull some panels off in situ. So uh, give us a couple of minutes. Have a look at 
look in here. Alrighty. Got a big filter capacitor. This looks like an inverter section and it sounds like it's about to start raining. I think I'm well undercover, but we'll find out. Alright. Alright. So, problem. <laughs> This is all potted in. Um, although we can see the tops of the capacitors, none of them appear to be bulging. But this could be a problem in that there's really nothing on that that we can fix. If that capacitor's gone, you know that'll be our uh, that'll be replaceable. We've got a bridge rectifier here. Um, there's not much I can do for this. It's all potted in. But we can have a look and see if anything has got loose or if whatnot is happening. But I would have a feeling that something in that module has died. And if that's the case, there's really nothing we can do for it. Um, I'm not digging the potting compound out of that. I have tried. In fact, I have a video I started three years ago um, and uh, I never finished. So let's get the screws back in this and uh, we'll just see if connecting and reconnecting the plugs made any difference. Alright, we've screwed the back on. Now we're going to plug everything back in again. I don't expect the outcome is going to be much different. Um, I reckon this has just been cooked. And it'll be in that resin potted module. And there's not going to be much I can do about it. But, never hurts to try. I think what I'm going to do is put the top two screws in here just to hold it in position. Oh, there's captive nuts in that bit. Well, in that case, I'll just put these two in for now. Um, yeah, we'll do that. And we'll do this guy up. And then we'll give it a pull start and see what happens. Turn our fuel back on again and uh, engine switch on. See what happens. We had a flashing light. I might plug something into it and see what happens. I think I'm going to go grab my PowerPoint tester and plug it into this. All right, so it's getting pretty windy. So I'm sorry if the audio is crap again. This is a little tester plug. It's got a bunch of uh, neons or LEDs in there and it gives you a color code out here that tells you what's wrong with the power point. It'll, mostly this will confirm if we have power available here. Um, and if we do, it'll be good. I've seen some cases where this overload light is erroneous, but uh, this looks like an inverter generator. So the little potter thing is going to be our inverter side and it's probably generating 12 volts out here. So I'll probably test the 12 volt output and see what's happening there too. Let's fire this thing up anyway. say the inverter module shag but let's see if we've got 12 volts all right so while I was inside trying to find a lead I discovered it's leaking fuel which is not great so I'm gonna to have to relocate this before I fire it up again or it could catch fire so I'm making note of where my fire extinguisher is all right I'm trying to block the wind as best I can we have a multimeter here on the 20 volt range and a lighter plug here should be able to see if we get any volts on this let's uh, fire this up again and hope we don't ignite the pool of fuel
All right, so we've got 12 volts happening on it. So I'd say the inverter module is dead. The inverter module is uh, chock-a-block full of potting compound. So I think the only real way we could make this work would be to rip that inverter module out and um, plug it into another mains inverter. I don't really like that idea, but it could be done. Anyway, I'm going to give the guy the bad news that this is probably uneconomical to repair. And uh, we'll see if we can figure it out. I might have to loan him my one. Anyway, quick diagnosis, not a hugely long video, but um, yeah, I dare say this is a common thing with these. I see a lot of these um, up on Marketplace, and this is probably why. Anyway, see you in the next one. We're going to get on with the Christmas stuff.